I'm back at the Engineering Technology Group today. I've come to meet with Steve Brown, who's going to talk us through the details and specifications of the Hardinge Bridgeport GX600. MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news, reviews, events, and special offers via video media. So Steve, this is the GX600 Hardinge Bridgeport machine available from the Engineering Technology Group. Just for our viewers, what is the size of this machine or the capacity? This is a 600 size machine, um, so basically the GX is, is from a family of sizes, starting from 480 all the way up to 1.6 metres, so a very large range within it. And, and I've looked, I've done a bit of reading and done a bit of research, which, you, which you'll be pleased to know, I'm sure. Um, and I'd like to talk about the build of the machine, okay. because lots of machining centres in the market are available, yep. but obviously builds vary. So I notice here that we've got something called an FEA casting. Do you know much about that and what different, or what does that give me? So that's a, a fine element analysis. So there's something that's um, from the factory, okay? So it's a, it's a series of software that is run through the, the main casting of the machine. Um, check for sturdiness, compensation, um, build quality in the casting, and, and that's what gives us our end results in, in the machine. Okay, and I was also going to talk to you about the linear guideway. So this yeah. is a linear machine. That's right. Some machines come with box guideways. There's always the argument, what's better? I know it's potentially application driven, but yes. with linears on this machine, is, is that a good thing? Yes, it's a, it's a faster machine. So I think gone are the days where we were after a boxway machine that's um, sluggish and taking big depths of cut. Now, if it, gone with our tooling supplies, we're looking at high feed rates, high spindle speeds, and, and, and really hitting the component. Okay, what about the spindle on this machine? How fast is it, if we're looking at a linear guide machine to get that speed, yeah. is the spindle equal to that? Yeah, so this is a, an 8,000 um, RPM spindle. Other options are available. Um, but again, for us, as we stock this item, um, it's a stock machine ready um, to, to, to go out. And would you say with the GX range of machines, it is one of your best sellers? Yeah, certainly, yeah. It's quite an adaptable product, so as we see it here, it's standard, and there's options that we can add to it to suit the customer's needs. With it being a 600x axis machine as well, we are conscious or we should be conscious about the floor space or what it's going to take up in our factory. Certainly, is, yeah. is this compact in your eyes? Yes, certainly. I mean, obviously within the UK, um, space is obviously money. So obviously within, within certain um, factories, we have a it's very critical to get a number of machines built into the footprint. I do notice as well this machine has got an umbrella tool changer. Yeah. How many tool pockets has it got? So this has got 20 tools as standard, an umbrella type um, option. Obviously, as uh, for the more higher end customer that would require an ATC with more tooling, um, we have other products that we would generally move on to. BT40? Yeah, BBT40, so it's a face and taper spindle. Uh, so again, going with its nature of the, uh, of the, of the casting and the Bridgeport's philosophy of rigidity, um, it gives you a lot more sturdiness within the spindle. Y-axis is also a key factor. A lot of engineers, they, they buy a machine based on the X-axis, but they often interrogate the Y because yeah. they need that stroke as well. What's the Y-axis here? This one's 415 in the Y. So for a 600 machine, that, that's, that's quite sizable yeah. as well. Yeah. You carry these machines in stock, I believe? Yes, certainly. So we have a, a number of configurations ranging from the 480 to the 1.6 metre, variation of controls, Siemens, Fanuc and Hardenine, and again, obviously, as all machines are retrofitable with swarf management and probing. On the control side, it's a three-axis machine. If I wanted to run a two-axis table with it to give me a five-axis solution, is that possible? Yes, yeah, certainly. So, um, obviously, most of the elements that we, um, when this machine goes out the door, has a fourth axis or a, a fourth and fifth axis table. Within the UK, the biggest seller is the Arden 9 control, so that is the majority of our, of our stock. Let's have a look, if we can stop the machine and maybe have a look inside, because I'd be interested to see as well um, accessibility, lo call it loadability, and, and from a swarf management perspective. So what, what happens with um, the swarf on this machine? So basically we have, uh, we have wash down around the outside that washes it down into the, uh, the extremities of the machine, where we have two boxes there that uh, manually we can, we can take out and, and empty. Um, again, if the customer wants options for an automatic swarf conveyor, we can, we can retrofit that at our other operations facility. And I noticed the door at the top as well opens, which a bit like a, well, you can load, you could load or you could crane parts through the top that's of the That's right, machine. yeah, that's the design of the machine. So as the, as the table can come forward, it obviously clears the nature of the spindle, allowing a hover egg crane or a forklift to come down and drop direct onto the table. 
So in our usual style then, Steve, we've, we've looked at plenty of these machines. Why is it going to be yours or the Hardinge Bridgeport? Again, it's competitively priced. It's got the Bridgeport name on it. It's very, very rigid. We've got case studies of them out in the marketplace. It's an excellent machine. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Cheers, Paul. For more videos, products and news, go to mtdcnc.com or follow MTD Online on Twitter.